Assalamu alaikum, this is Safiya Ravit with The Ideal Muslimah doing Ramadan Reminders. So, can you go into the masjid while you're on your period? The scholars definitely debated about this issue, and a majority of the scholars actually came out with the opinion that a woman who is on her menses or uh, in postpartum bleeding is not allowed to stay inside of the masjid. She's allowed to pass by for a need, but not actually allowed to stay in the masjid. And they get this opinion from the ayah in the Quran in Surah Nisa, which says, and do not approach the prayer while you are in a state of intoxication or a state of janaba, that is sexual impurification after someone has had intercourse and hasn't made ghusl. So they used analogy or a qiyas that the one who is in a state of janaba or sexual impurity and the one who is in the state of hayd, um, menstruation, they're similar, they're parallel because they both are in a state of impurity that requires ghusl and therefore the ruling for the junub that they shouldn't go into the masjid and stay there unless they just passing by it should be for the menstruating woman as well. The second uh, evidence that they use is the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that he encouraged all the women, both menstruating and non-menstruating women, to come to the Eid prayer. But he said specifically, but they should, the menstruating women, avoid the place of prayer. So both of these evidences are used to indicate that a woman who is menstruating or uh, postpartum in her postpartum bleeding is not allowed to stay inside the masjid. They permitted her to go by and pass by it if necessary. For example, when the Prophet ﷺ told Aisha anha to fetch something from the masjid while she was menstruating. Okay, now that's the opinion of the majority. A woman should not go into the masjid and stay there. The next is the opinion of a minority of scholars, um, which says she is actually allowed to stay in the masjid. This is the opinion of Ibn Hazm rahimahullah. This is the opinion of Al Muzani from the Shafi'i Madhab and Abu uh, and Al Dawood Al Zahiri. And this is taken by the modern scholar Yusuf Al Qardawi, Sheikh Yusuf Al Qardawi. So this opinion is that a woman is allowed to stay in the masjid, and the reason being is because they said that. This uh, ayah that says the junub or the one in sexual impurity is not allowed to go into the masjid, it's, it's not a strong enough evidence. And they say that because there is not really a strong parallel between the one who is junub, sexual impurity, and the one who is in her menses. And they say because while both require ghusl, the one in a state of janaba can get out of janaba at any moment they want to by just simply making ghusl. Whereas the woman who is menstruating or postpartum bleeding, she doesn't have the ability to get out of that state of impurity immediately. She has to wait until an appointed time. So they saw that there was actually no um, significant parallel between the two and that analogy should not be made between the junub and the menstruating woman. So they say that ayah is for the junub, but it shouldn't be applied to the menstruating woman. In addition to that, they say that um, there is no strong evidence or hadith that mentions that a menstruating woman should not go into the masjid. In fact, there is a da'if hadith which mentions that the masjid is not permitted for the junub, sexual, sexually impure, and the menstruating woman. But this is uh, considered a hadith that is da'if by Sheikh al-Albani and many other scholars. And so they say that this hadith cannot be used to make the fiqh ruling that a woman should not go into the masjid while she's on her menses. Um, in addition to that, they say that those who are uh, uh, of the opinion that a woman should be able to go into the masjid is that there's no sahih hadith and if you know women at the time of the messenger were menstruating every month, then there should have been some sort of sahih authentic narration where he directly told them you can't go into the masjid while you're menstruating. And the truth is there is no sahih hadith for it. Again, there's a da'if hadith and there's the analogy to the junub person. And as for the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ told the menstruating women to come to the Eid prayer but to avoid the place of prayer, those who allow women to uh, menstruating women to come to the masjid said that this hadith doesn't indicate that a woman's not allowed in the masjid at all, but rather that when the women are standing up in the rows of prayer, that the menstruating women should not be in that area. They should be um, at the back, maybe. Uh, so avoiding this confusion that who's praying and not praying. So the menstruating woman should come to the back if she is attending the masjid, just like the Prophet ﷺ said to the women, come to the Eid prayer, but the menstruating woman should avoid the prayer place. So they understood that to mean the place where the prayer actually takes place, 
They should not be in those rows or lines. They should come to the back of the masjid. We also, they also come with, with the evidences that when Aisha radiallahu anha was menstruating while it was Hajj time, the Prophet sallallahu permitted her and said, you can do anything um, in regards to the Hajj, but stay away from the Tawaf. Do not do Tawaf around the Kaaba. Um, so what, what was understood from that is she's allowed to be in the Haram, be around the Kaaba, be in the vicinity, and do Dua, Dhikr, whatever she wants, but she shouldn't do the things that are not allowed, like going Tawaf around the Kaaba, and of course also the prayer. So this showed that it was allowed for her to be in the masjid al-haram. In addition to that, there's also the evidence that um, there was a, a woman who, a, free, a freed slave woman, who, used, who actually pitched up a tent in the masjid and lived in the masjid for a while. And so they used this evidence to say that she was not told that when you were on your period, you would have to leave. There are also evidences like Umm Mahjan, the caretaker of the masjid, a female Abyssinian woman took care of the masjid, and she was not told to leave the masjid when she was on her period. Rather, she took care of the masjid daily, all the time. And finally, um, those who say that a woman who is on her period should not go into the masjid because of the filth of you know, the period bleeding, there is the um, narration of Aisha radiallahu anha that one of the wives of the Prophet وسلم, was actually in a state of istihaba, which is a state of bleeding that comes from um, a actual medical problem and not menstruation itself and that it says that she was permitted to go into the masjid as long as she took the extra precautions to make sure that nothing would dirty the masjid. So this is an authentic narration. She was allowed to go into the masjid even though she was um, bleeding from istihaba. And so we understand that if the confusion was about a woman not being able to go to the masjid because it may cause dirt, uh, or filth to the masjid, we know that we have modern ways of stopping uh, the menstrual blood from, from, from going anywhere and messing uh, any area. And so we would say that, inshallah, there is the opinion that a woman is allowed to go into the masjid and stay in the masjid for valid reasons like going for a halaqa or going for um, taraweeh prayer to go listen to the reciters and follow along with them. Um, again, if you want to look at the opinion of whether she can touch the Qur'an or recite the Qur'an, then look at our other videos. If you have questions about this video, please leave some questions in the comment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.